All right, welcome everybody to LiveWa.com. That's L-I-V-E-W-A-A-A-A-A-G-H.com. If you were counting, that was five A's. We bring you live you know Warhammer content all the time, whether it is on Twitch, through uh, Blood Bowl 2, or uh, soon Total War Warhammer, or even very soon also Vermintide, the end times, or on uh, our table here. So we either do Age of Sigmar tabletop games live on Twitch, or we do some painting, painting tutorials and uh, just painting, you know, sessions where we can just chat a little bit about Warhammer. Whatever it is, it's always Warhammer and it's always live. That's what we do. Welcome to the stream today. We are... Today we're talking uh, Blood Bowl 2. And this is going to be a short video today. Uh, we are live. So if you're watching, be sure to, to uh, ask some questions. Today we are uh, talking Blood Bowl 2. And in particular, we're talking dwarves. Uh, this is going to be a very quick um, tutorial in a way. Or a quick how-to. How to play dwarves. Uh, in Blood Bowl 2 uh, on the on um, Xbox or, or computer. So I'm going to go here to Team League Management. Uh, and when we look, obviously I've played a couple dwarves here. Uh, this is my main team right here, 1980. Uh, I think I lost my last game. I haven't played the dwarves in a while because some of the games that really go over 2,000 become like kill games. Uh, and that that's fun, don't get me wrong. Uh, but I wanted to try something new. So if you see here, I started like a wood elf army. So we're going to talk about that later on. Today it's all about dwarves. So I'm going to take you here very quickly through this uh, team right here. But in reality, I'm going to talk to you about a vanilla dwarf army. So this is my team. If you can see, uh, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight long beards, two runners, one blitzer, and uh, two troll slayers. That's how I roll uh, with dwarves, and we're gonna talk about some special abilities uh, of that that I've been able Talisman to get on this team as I've progressed later on very soon. On now, um, we're gonna go in reality first to a vanilla team. I think this is actually a 100% vanilla. I don't think we've played a single game with them. 12 players here that was able to purchase. Look at that zero on the bank. And this here is uh, an example of how I like personally like to start dwarf teams. So we have two runners. Why do I get two runners? Um, dwarves are a very, very slow team. So actually, before I even go into, into the roster, let's talk a little bit about dwarves. Dwarves are slow, as everybody probably knows from tabletop or from anything you've played. So they are slow, uh, but they, they're able to take a punch or two. So what we want to do here is actually um i like to keep at least a couple of runners and uh, the reason for that is one can get injured one can get um uh, just stunned or anything like that and these are your only guys that actually have any kind of movement so if we go into the score because they have a movement allowance of six compared to say a long beer that has a unit uh movement allowance of four so this is kind of what allows you to move a little bit faster um and again faster by dwarf terms not by uh, uh, all the other teams terms so um, and it come, can come in handy when you're moving forward on the field and you're you know you, you think you've got the blocking to make a little run for it that's what the runners are for in reality the dwarf team is not a passing team you don't really want to pass the ball or at least I, I have actually seen some people play with dwarves passing but it's just not the way I, at least i've played so uh so we have two runners kind of like a back a main and a backup followed by one two three and f down here four five six long beards long beards are going to form your two, main line people. they are your linemen Did you know you have a fat they are uh, uh very very good gym. linemen they don't move much they only have a movement allowance of four but when air. we go in here you can see hey they have block they have thick skull and they have tackle. So when we when we go here, block the block skill prevents a player from being knocked down after a block on. Um, I, I don't remember what that uh, dice roll is called, but um, it's huge. It's huge because um, you you out of um, possible six chances to go down, um, you can now block. 
um, and, and, and it's it's pretty big, especially when you're up front. Something we're going to talk about in a second is as you progress, then you can get uh, stand firm, which does not allow you to be pushed back. So then you have your main line that it can block and cannot be pushed back, and that is very, very big. Thick skull here, this player treats a roll of 8 on the injury table after any modifiers have been applied as a stun, rather. So this is, this is another good one. Uh, if they're going to be taking a lot of hits, um, players are going to need to roll a very high roll on the injury table to uh, actually get them taken out or anything. So, again, we're talking uh, linemen up front that can take a punch. Uh, and tackle players who are standing in this player's tackle zone are not allowed to use their dodge skill if they dodge, nor may they use dodge if the player throws a block at them. So, another huge, huge one. So, uh, as you can see, they're sort of a, um, a defensive, in a way, um, and, and punchy army. You're not going to run laps around anybody. You're not going to, you know, pull a Barry Sanders or something and try to... Um, go from one end to the other with the ball it's more about slowly but surely moving forward behind these long beers that are very strong so then we uh, we look at the rest of um, the roster here and we go to the two trolls layers these are All your magic big guys uh, these are the guys that really hit hard and, uh, and will put some damage out so movement allowing a five strength three agility two armor value of eight they do have block as well so um, they can stand on the front line and, and not be um, not be knocked down that easily. They also have thick skull. The beauty here is that they have Dauntless and they have Frenzy. Dauntless has read it out loud. The player uses this ability if he attempts to block an opponent who is stronger than himself. Roll a d6 and on a 2 plus. Um, if the total is equal to or lower than an opponent's strength, use the play in normal strength. If the total is greater, the strength is equal to his opponent when he makes a block. So this is huge in particular when you're playing orcs or you're playing chaos, so big, strong lines. Um, you want these guys to come up, uh, use Dauntless, uh, and to try and block and knock down the big guys. That's um, one of the concerns with dwarves is they are strong. We just talked about how strong their linemen are with the long beards. Uh, but they're not as strong obviously as orcs or chaos. So when you go up against those uh, teams You need troll slayers in addition. They have frenzy frenzy is one of my favorite abilities Why because let's read it when this player blocks an opponent after a pushback The player must immediately throw a second block against the same opponent as long as they're both still standing and adjacent He must systematically follow up so he has to follow up each time, so something very useful here is even if the first roll does not work out for you, or you just get a push back, you will go again to try and knock the player down. Huge, again, for dwarves, and in particular, uh, troll slayers are very, very good at crowd surfing. Uh, what we mean by crowd surfing is uh, pushing an opponent's uh, player up against... Um, uh, outside of the outside of the lines, and that means they go into the crowd and they're they are KO'd or injured, and they're officially out of the game. So it's it's very important there to to try and do that when your opponent has players near the the sidelines. That's the goal um, many times, and troll slayers are very good at that because again. Uh, uh, one of your opponents might not know that he's too close to the line, but because you have the follow-up, you're going to be able to push him first once right against the line, and then the second one hopefully push him into the crowd. Second of all, Troll Slayers uh, have Strength 3, so um, one of the good abilities that you can get after this as soon as he levels up is... Uh, what's it called? Uh, one second. It's... It's a Killing Blow. I'm thinking of I'm thinking of tabletop for some reason, mighty blow. Um, so just to to make him to make him hit significantly harder. Um, so the the rest of the army here. Hold on, is this? There we go. Going back to the vanilla team. So the rest of the army here, or the team, I'm used to tabletop. We spoke about the runners, spoke about the long beers, and then we have some blitzers. Uh, Blizzards have a movement now of 5, Strength 3, Agility 3, Armor value of 9, so they're tough, they're tough. And they also have Thick Skull and they have Block. 
So the, um, I usually carry one or two of them. I remember on my main team, uh, we had uh, um, one of my blitzers died on one of my first games and I just never replaced him. The other one though went up to be a, a level 4 blitzer uh, with great abilities. Uh, but as you can see in my, uh, the way I play dwarves at the very least, it's about having a strong line and then having the runners and the troll slayers doing a good chunk of the work. Um, the long beards are, in I play a sort of, I guess, defensive way of, um, way of playing with dwarves. So let's go ahead and take a look at the bigger, on the, this is the uh, 1980 team now. Intimate message, Bob. Um, if, if you see some, like for example, this level 4 well, long beard, you'll see that I even gave him mighty blow, but the main thing here is guard and stand firm. These are two uh, abilities that you should get as a dwarf once you level up. Guard, let's read it. A player with this skill assists an offensive or defensive block even if he is in another player's tackle zone, this skill may not be used to assist the foul. So very good. Again, we're talking a strong line for the dwarves, and guard just makes that even better because they, they're able to assist more. Stand firm is another one that I personally love, uh, and basically the pair may, may choose to use this skill to not be pushed back as a result of a block. Another really, really big one because then you have block, so you cannot be... Um, if it's both at, uh, attacker defender down, you've got you got block, and then if you get pushed back, you cannot get pushed back. So really, um, your opponent, by the time you level up your long beers, is really going to be rolling uh, for two outcomes: either the full defender down, or the defender, um, the dodge one, whatever it, uh, that one's called. Um, so that's why you want strong uh, a strong line and strong long beards. So that is basically the uh, the roster here for the dwarves. Um, we're gonna go over a little bit more later on. For now, thank you for watching. This is livewa.com, L-I-V-E-W-A-A-A-A-A-G-H.com, taking a little bit through um, how to play dwarves in Blood Bowl 2. Um, soon, we're gonna play a little bit of um, a little bit of a game and show you a little bit how they are played. Plus, we're going to talk a little bit of Wood Elves later on. For now, thank you. Uh, be sure to visit our website and catch our tabletop games. We do play live tabletop on Twitch, usually How's on the, the weekends. Music, Plus, catch Experts. us painting. We love to do that. That's uh, That can happen at any point of the week. Last but not least, uh, we do play Blood Bowl for real, not a tutorial like this. And uh, soon we're going to be playing Total War Warhammer and Vermintide the End Times. That is coming soon. For now, be sure to subscribe. Um, and we'll catch you on the next video.